name's uh, Jim Jackson, James Jackson. Most people call me Jim. I'm a leather carver, leather tooler. Uh, I, leather work is basically uh, the craft that I do. I work uh, here at the Brinton Museum. Uh, I have a small shop here. Uh, a couple of years ago, I retired from King's Saddlery uh, in Sheridan, Wyoming. I started working for Don King back in, oh, it was probably about 1973, 74. Uh, my father worked at the old Ernst Company, and he was a head saddle maker there, which was a shop down the street. Uh, you know, that's where I learned my trade, the, the influence of the type of carving that we're doing here in Wyoming at this point originated basically in the Mediterranean. In California, they had long uh, seasons out there with good weather all the time, so they decorated their riding equipment, very fancy sorts of things. Uh, you go up in the Dakotas, you won't see as much, much of that up there because in those days, uh, they just liked plain sorts of things, and the influence was more English uh, um, and Northern European. Well, in terms of my own style, um, I would I would say what's what's I think interesting about the type of work I do. It has to do not only with the leather carving, but it also has to do with my training as an artist. So a lot of my the way I lay out patterns and so forth is actually quite a bit uh, different from uh, a lot of the people in my trade that are carvers. This carving has influenced a whole industry in Japan. I mean, you can go to Tokyo or Kyoto or Nara or any of those towns and you'll see women carrying Western style leather purses. You know, uh, there are particular types of music that come out of different cultures and that type of thing and, and they find and they're recognizable. Well, it's the same with leather carving or painting and that type of thing. And so uh, when people all from all around the country will look at my work and say that's Sheridan style carving. You can go to Japan, almost any place you go to Japan. I've taught over there, been over there five times now teaching and it's become part of their culture. You can go into the leather shop and mention shared style carving, they know what you're talking about. So that influence uh, that I've had comes through me and then it gets, it, it gets out there. I was stopped in New York, I was walking down the street one day and a guy stopped me on the street and he said, you must be from Sheridan. And I looked at him and I thought, how in the world did this guy know I was? And he says, I can see you on your belt. There's some guy in Sheridan that's tools just like that. <laughs> and it was my belt. And I said, yeah, that's me. <laughs> so, so that gives you an idea. We call these stamping tools. Uh, your carving tool is your swivel knife. And uh, which is, I mean, this is a knife that uh, that uh, Don built for me about 35 years ago. Uh, and it's a knife I use a lot of. I have another knife that uh, uh, has an angle on it, so I've got a straight blade knife and an angled knife. But I have a whole box full of swivel knives. <laughs> these, uh, these tools, you know, are, are, I do have stainless steel tools, but most of them are just old nails like this. You can still see the rings on them. Uh, leather is soft enough material that uh, just an old iron nail will function well. And actually some of the nicest Don King tools I ever saw uh, were built out of nails. Most of my tools are old tools. I inherited lots of my tools from my father who was a saddle maker. Uh, at home I have a shop where I have most of his saddle building tools. Uh, that type of thing. But for the most part, these tools are, are all very old, really hard steel uh, involved. This is an old tool. It's a rose knife out of West Philadelphia. It's over 100 years old. Uh, extremely hard steel. It was about an inch wider 
when it was new, uh, it's probably gone through two or three saddle makers. It's very unusual to combine uh, leather work and painting. Uh, I suppose there are a few people out there that might be doing it. I, I'm not sure. I don't. I rarely see a, anything like it. But because of my background, uh, as uh, I, you know, I grew up in a leather shop and and then went off and and went to school and got formal training as a painter, those two things have come together. Uh, I like the idea of, of working with uh, an, a two to, an image on a flat surface that's two-dimensional uh, with an actual carved uh, piece. It's sculptural. It's a sculptural process. So it's bas-relief or shallow sculpture is what the leather work is. And you're combining that with the, the illusion of, uh, of an image that you painted on the, on the leather. So that in, incorporating those ideas are, are interesting because when you look at, look at a panel that I've carved and then painted on, uh, you know, your mind, a person's mind has to sort of switch back and forth because you're looking at a carved reality and then, and then there's the illusion of a, on, a, on the two-dimensional plane. So, so it's not an easy thing to do. And my overall just passion with doing this sort of thing. Every morning I get up and go to work, it's a joy for me to get into the shop, into the studio, uh, whatever it is I'm doing. Um, I mean, I have the best career you can imagine. I have two careers, basically, where I can be totally creative and do my thing.